I'm so happy about how everything turned out. I'm so happy about how everyone was happy, everyone felt satisfied, and the feedback we are getting is really, really enormous. It is actually very overwhelming. First of all, I was told that people in Kenya don't pay for workshops like this. I was told nobody will pay if I put a fee in. And um, believing that we are going to offer something that's really needed, I still went ahead and put a fee. I mean, there were three tires of the fees. Uh, and I was okay if we've only got five people, if you only got 10 people, that was going to be fine. Uh, it was our first time to do this, so I was going to be very much okay if the turnout wasn't as great as uh, you know we expected. However, the the biggest surprise is that the turnout was overwhelming. We actually stopped registration and added more sports at the end, and still there were more people who were asking to come the last minute, and we had to just turn them away. So the attendance was overwhelmingly amazing. Most of the teachers who, who are actually coaching kids who are so uh, uh, skillful I needed to gain more knowledge about the game of hockey. So we came up with this uh, coaching clinic. This is the Tunisia Sports Coaching Clinic. Uh, to be able to impart the knowledge that we have, because uh, we have quite a number of capable and well-qualified coaches up to FIH level 2. So we coach the teachers, let them be good coaches in hockey so that they can take good care of our kids because most of these schools we supply kids to them. So we expect the same level that we've been of coaching that we've been giving them, the teachers will also be able to do that. So that's why we came up with this and we also brought the girls here. Uh, so that uh, it can be good example and real life experience for the teachers. So they have kids to coach, we take care of that, we look at it and then we judge them from there. We want to try to spread out, but mostly we want to develop sports that are not in this country or famous in this country, like lacrosse. Uh, and there's a reason for that, it's because the networking that I have can support those sports. Post hockey and stuff, people think, oh, give me equipment, give me this. People are just thinking we are doing this because of hockey, but that's not the case. Really, really, honestly, hockey is, has become a vehicle sport, it's a vehicle for us to achieve other things. And those other things for the players, we love to talk about the coaches, you guys now. For the players, like Dennis had mentioned, you know, player first, the individual first. So that's why we do home visits, we check if they are food at home, or what is the kind of situation they live in. What, how can we help as a person or as an organization or as a school? So once we're playing hockey, we're getting the kids. Parents are coming and saying, oh, my kid also wants to play. What is the situation? Then we learn all these things. So it's, it's kind of a cycle. So we're using sports as a vehicle, and that's why we are starting with that. But the most important thing is the self, the individual, and then school. I know we want to win, we want to win national, we want to win. But a coach will win championships, but a true true coach will change a life. This kid is why you know when they go home they later get married or they not even focus on anything. This kid is bright. Maybe they don't pass because they are thinking of things at home. Why don't you take it upon yourself to connect this kid? So we stop the cycle of poverty. That is the whole cycle why we do this. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, uh, we mentioned the biggest. The biggest thing there is, is the player that we, for, for sure we are so, we are so really happy and well that what you've done in your kids is a great, great thing. It's the, the best you've done, we could see them and I know we continue working with them. I was just trying to get a chat there of me told that we have like this 26 kids, uh, or 26 or 27 in standard year going to uh, secondary school. So they, you will be teaching them or you will be them. When you talk about coaches, this is the first time we are doing this uh, coaching thing, and we will definitely develop it to a different level where we have either level zero or tunza, level one or level something. For whatever point, we are still, still a working progress, we we'll get to structure. And we are hoping that we can send, I would say, we we'll able to send all of you, it's tough to send all of you to the K2 coaching uh, levels. The other thing I'm so happy about is that we got students who are really hungry to learn. They were asking questions, they were excited, they wanted to know more, and everyone came back the second day. That is the hardest thing, because we had a very long day on Saturday, and then 
today everyone showed up and um, I was impressed because um, a lot of people could have just said well I had a lot of knowledge on Saturday I don't need I can understand I don't need to do it in the field the next day but no everyone turned up and it was really amazing and I do appreciate um, a lot so our development model we start from primary school why we, we want to start young first is to give us time to get resources we don't want to be going to high school they just starting from one and everyone you know everyone wants to play hockey so we start with primary school we start with class four uh, so that we see the development so that we impact good habits and good character of these kids so we want to make them in a mindset that still young and you can redirect them towards the good part so as a primary then we want to feed them into high school high school that can work with us not just because of scholarships or anything but high school that really care and matter for these kids so projects uh blazers this is yours who's the leader of blazers uh, this is going back to the system group of schools yeah what's it called How, how was that session, guys? Very nice. My first. I don't know challenge. You don't know the names. Mm -hmm. Names was a problem. Names was a problem. Uh -huh. Then uh, you don't know the the strengths. Don't know the name. Challenge man. Both the names. A player. You do want to go Yes, actually. You had a team. Yes. Please, come on, Yes, yeah. But what I did that really helped me now was that number, the tag. Excellent. And in your teams back at school, wherever you're coaching, have you missed somebody's name even after one week or after two weeks? 
So those are some of the techniques that you've got to really master and get to know those names pretty fast. And sometimes you don't even look for the name, the real names. Look for them, uh, the nicknames that the kids use, where they're comfortable. And especially your girls, girls, uh, if you we never you never use a wrong name for a girl and take it easy. You have to inquire from her. Is this your nickname? Are you okay with that? Are you comfortable with the, with the call name? And use those nicknames if they're comfortable. That is being part of encouragement, making sure that they, they, they give the best. Is that okay? The main challenge I found was like the first time it was you don't know your players, and you don't know your strong where. Because we lost our strongest to fatigue. I think she didn't eat. So we had to compensate and bring one of the meat to the fore and then utilize their weak side. So that one worked for us. <laughs> okay, Scott, you won. Yeah, you almost. Because they don't do one, but after that, yeah. uh, I control. I was only scoring by the way. We considered a goal because the player was just there. And I turned. Yeah. And I turned to. <laughs> yes. So when we went for the half time, after, after talking to all the, the team, now I was talking to her, I, I asked her, what is wrong? I'm thirsty. Yes. So yeah. I I I, I, hope, water, I hope they've been given water yeah. because I promised her water immediately <laughs> after the game. <laughs> Please go get your water. Okay, go. And after that, I saw some. These little things make a lot of difference in a video. It's just that don't be carried away that you do not correct the co you don't correct anything. If there's something that you need to correct, however motivated you are, however encouragement you are. Please do it. Do everything that you need to do with the players, correct them, and give them right information. Uh, things like, th those are little things like just having a stick in the next of field, a pen. The, 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 the players look that this guy is serious, this guy knows what he's doing, this guy is talking about something he's seen when you come at halftime. We have four weeks. They know what, what hockey is, but. They cannot even get to that ball or do anything. We've tried changing the positions, we've tried putting someone there. We've considered six. Oh! Hey. Uh, you said you considered six goals. How was. Uh, did anybody look at uh, body language or.? Uh, body language is also important. Um, like I just told, we should to move from there, we come here. This is how you should stand when you're talking to your players. So avoid players are here and coaches are mixed in. <laughs> like that, no. Make it space and the next player to you, space. You always come close to the coach all the time. They want to be special all the time. So make sure there's space in you. Okay, now is out. You are the coach or you are the coach. That's important after giving the talks. Body language really plays a big part to the players on the pitch. When I look up to my coach, I've just considered a goal, then you're like, your head drops. It gets into me that we are out of this game. So always uh, pretend to be strong. I know it's difficult, nobody wants to lose. But just show them that you can do it. It's not the end of the world. But when you concede and you are like, Mama, yo, that's the end of it. So please just be there strong and keep showing that you're in charge. One uh, parent feedback was that uh, the coaches had tested some of the things that we were sharing about hockey in this country. One of them being that the basics is glaringly very bad at all levels of hockey in the country. For example, club hockey players, even up to this moment, still, for example, raise their six very high when they want to shoot that goal and they either miss hit the ball or, or the defenders take away the ball from them. At the National League, when you watch it, some of the teams lose because of the same very, very same factor. So the coaches agreed that there's a problem and they were so surprised that the, the problems are so easy to fix. So they were really happy that they're going back to their corners all over and fixing this problem. So we, are, we wait to see the results of that. Most of the goals are scored in the beginning of the game towards the end of the quarter. For one simple reason, uh, the goalkeeper has warmed up for before the game, like the, the six minutes we had, no action, you get comfortable, the game has just started, maybe you attack, before you even know what is happening, you're hit. So always, if you concede, don't be in a panic, it happens. 
But the goalkeepers make sure they are alert from the word go, beginning of the game. In between the game, it's okay. Because everybody is alert. But most of the time, it's considered in the beginning and the end, towards the end of the quarter. If you tell me you to put a note, so you have notes that the player are going to negative. Write them down, Paka. End of game, no, no, I'm here. So, I'm here. So, during this half time, you try and I'm here. This is on a positive way. Yeah, I would, I would be so happy to see somebody with a piece of paper and a, and a pen just looking and giving some instructions. Is that okay? I watch, I also still watch the river. Your stance when they're playing, the kids are playing. They're also relying on you. You're part of the team. If the team is playing on the field on the side, you're part number twelve of the team. If I saw a referee holding that goal, I'm gonna cry even gaming and the What message are you giving out to the players? You know, you're not even interested in our game. Yeah? We're just playing, we're just playing just for fun. So those are little things that we do not know. And I want I want us to, as coaches, we have to know the signals uh, of those things. Because I, I saw some signals, which you read, yes, a short corner, yes. The way you point, some people are pointing this way, somebody is pointing this way. Whatever it is, that, that direction, that's okay. But let's learn also those signals. It's important for, for us as coaches to know, so that we can train our, our players. If you don't know the rules, then you don't know which rules you are. You're breaking. I'll comment on Taro. <laughs> Taro's running, running. Like, an umpire, you have to stand. Like, Unona, you, you are seeing the pitch. The pitch of, like, I can't keep on running. I'll miss some fouls. And then coaches will be like, they will kill you. Because you're not seeing the balls. Mm. Most... The balls are too small. <laughs> Don't get excuse. This is a training. Guys, we This was a quarter pitch. <laughs> Me, I can see the cones from here. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Samson. Just finish it fast and move on to the next thing. Move on. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's yeah. We gave you umpiring, so you also learn yeah. how to umpire and be in the shoes of umpires. Initially, we were going to combine coaching and umpiring, but it was going to be so sweet. So next time we'll do a, a holiday weekend where it's three days, so we we'll do umpiring. That's the educators were also excellent. Uh, what I said yesterday about expecting the educators to be humble and share rather than command and teach was actually what happened. Um, they were very approachable. They were not just lecturing, they were asking questions, setting up things for discussions and I didn't even know that they could be such good teachers or educators because I've not seen them do it before. Um, what I was going for was just, you know, sharing the experience as being in hockey for this long, but they actually ended up being very good educators. I really enjoyed it. And I'm so happy that I picked the right team for this. Now, an umpire has to be very decisive. But the moment you blow the whistle and then you're like, should it go left? Okay, this team is white, so I'll white scoring that way or that way? <laughs> then you start looking at the numbers, you lose it. The first time I saw the, when we had that half time, we came and met some people who were trying, the reason why I'm asking about the stick, the referee had a stick trying to explain this is what I want you to do, this is what I want you to do. That two minutes, how can it improve the player. We need to be able to teach a player anything at that particular time. That's why I do not want you to think because we're going to confuse the player. Have the right equipment for that particular uh, session and reason. Be very firm and be very friendly <laughs> and above all be very fair. So blow your whistle and if it's foot, if it's short corner it is but not decisive. Not this. Central Shot corner. Decisive. Call it. You are wrong. <laughs> and it's not. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, pay attention. You are going to fight in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing a uniform. I'm wearing a Shot corner. And then. Already there's a motion. End of game. Go. 16. 16, you must face, if you are pairing here, 16, face that way. Don't face the ball, it's 16 going that way. And <laughs> <laughs> if it's 16 going that way, the umpire, if you are on that side, you have to face that way. 
16. That is 16, but you don't. Straight arms. Or like this. <laughs> this one. Oh. He was <laughs> Okay, the coach complaining to the umpire instead of the captain. We talked about this in class. Uh, again, you're human. Try to restrain yourself. If it was food, the umpire didn't see it, you can ask the captain, Captain, especially if it's a goal, like he's in the Gondogo at But if it's something that will change the outcome of the game, tell the captain to approach the umpire. Now, that's on umpiring. You're in Kidogo, what are you in Medosha Clinic? So, next thing is Nikuju at all the rules. Okay, I uh, just took some notes uh, during halftime talk. Uh, yeah. So, given that I told the two coaches that I had, the two teams, when half time, when it's half time, give the players a minute or two to talk. Okay, this was a short time, so give them more than 30, 30 seconds to talk among themselves. You can walk away. Uh, if it's a team that know each other, the captain will tell them. They'll discuss. They'll complain to each other. They'll point fingers at each other, and then now you come back and say, so what do you guys think? What happened? Then you speak. But if you start correcting from the get-go, but they want a hammer, they're looking for what? They're not, nothing. They're not hearing anything. They won't get anything. The first two minutes you talk, they won't get anything. So give them time. Um, if you're a team of coaches, sometimes the three, maybe you also have a goalie coach or four or an offensive coach or defensive coach, uh, you should have a strategy. If someone always talks fast, you should always have a plan. Akimaliza for Uzake Zote. Then you talk. But sometimes we rush. Like half time you have enough time. The two minutes I understand. Half time I love you. No, who's it? So you're both talking. And it's it's human. You want to get a point across. No, have a plan. So they pay attention to one person. You are fighting the empire. So I was the empire fighting the empire. She didn't have a whistle. She was fighting the empire. For the halftime talk, we had the team which was here. Blazers. Blazers. Halftime talk. They they did so well because Pia and Mel Apple. Blazers. The captain and me to Apple and the four gear. Then I just slipped off. Two minutes. We had not said a word. <laughs> <laughs> and I reminded them. Two minutes is gone. They are still like, okay. No, there was a player who had been injured. So <laughs> that was not your player. So two minutes, nothing said. Now, on the small games we had, the mini games we had, we got so obsessed with the winning <laughs> than on developing the kids and developing our our technical and tactical skills. Eh? I expected even in Mambuna tactics. Mm. I don't care whether you scored 20. That's like a ball in Rudy Yuma. Ball is spread side. Yes, I saw I saw you. you, you your team was doing it. Well. Yes, in Sim, I could. Coach educators who I handpicked. <laughs> Not because they know everything, not because they are super, you know, certified, high level, no, but because they hold so much experience and they are very humble, which was very key to me. Um, I didn't want any coach educators who come and trample upon, you know, the coaches they're teaching or show that they, you know, have this attitude of know it all. Uh, I wanted it more to be about sharing other than just teaching and telling and saying you're doing this this is wrong this is right and so i handpicked uh, you know these educators which is nixon dennis uh, caroline gushu joseph osino uh so they could help me because honestly i don't know everything i don't even know much but they have a wealth of experience they have not been really utilized in this country and i thought this was a good platform for them to feel free and share what they they have seen and what they've done and what they've learned over the years of playing and coaching. You were given the time that you were working as a team like Team Paula or Zitos, you should have discussed that what are what system or what are we going to do, what are the system? And then this one has to come up front. Uh, or did you have a system? What was yes. the system? You, you discussed as a team. As a team you discussed as a team. What was it? We started with three one Two, one, two, one, and what? they say, okay, no, because they are all new players to you, you don't know them. So, uh, when you go to high level, uh, like FIH, you can be called to a tournament and you're given completely a, a team from nowhere, like you don't know them. So, you, you learn them to the first two minutes, then you say, mm, maybe I should bring that one back. And make sure the players honor their position. So, Ula, like in Bia, Natambaya, all the way, you, you try to restrict and say, 
play your V, go off. If you go ahead, make sure someone is covering you. That's why the system is coming. <laughs> not enough to teach basic uh, fundamentals of hockey to you know people who really don't have that knowledge two days might not be enough maybe three or four or a week but that's why we focus on the things that we identified during the national game hockey games and narrowed it down to what is really really necessary that can bring impact to their teams when you're trying to get the ball from a fast opponent ta -ta -ta -ta, and you start to use your stick recklessly ta -ta, to get the ball away. Ta -ta 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 -ta. The whistle goes bleep. What is the term of the foul? Stick play. Yeah. Someone asked me what is recklessly. So if you did the the right one is hacking, a monkey has run in the field. And the empire stopped the game uh, clock while they're removing the the monkey. What is the name of the what is the name for the way the place we started at the substitution we such as this? So now a lot of you get so many stories, which I don't really. As long as you meant what it's supposed to mean, yeah, you need some bully. Someone said face off. Face off is ice hockey. That's where I'm coming from. We use terminologies are field hockey, for example. Bully. Bully is the answer. Uh, and this bully is used when the game has to be restarted, when the clock stops and the game has to be restarted, yet the ball has not left. A goal out of play and there was no penalty. The same thing if you go to an umpire and it's not fault for this guy or fault for this guy, they bully. What does the referee call if somebody blocks another player from getting the ball? You most of you got it. Obstruction. So a ball, a little shot on the goal, hits an unmarked defender positioned five yards away, like from between me and, and Dennis. Between the shot, the the shot and the goalie. So Dennis is in front of the goalie, and I'm here, and I get a soccer ball. What is the umpire going to award? Well, you know, I say a free hit. So if you say free hit, you have a reason. And this happens in the game. Kila sasa sisi kodi sana sema. Ima mchapa. You have a free hit. You have a penalty. What you mean? The reason why they specified at least five yards away means that the player had time to react. It's 
not left to the player. The player then to react. So ni go ni go to body wa vikwa sako. So ni short corner, penalty corner. After the insertion of a penalty corner, the receiving player controls the ball inside the circle and takes a shot at goal. The ball deflects off the defender's stick and goes in the goal. Does that count as a goal? No. But why? People don't yes. So if you don't yes, do you understand? Why not? Yeah, they stop the ball inside the circle. Yeah. You got everyone is okay? Do that? Yes. Alright, good job. Okay. That team. That team, good job. Uh, 12. <laughs> We are requesting that you organize another one for us. It's part of the mission. Of, uh, I've had that question yeah, in the city park. We, we get back to you where we need to. In physical education, we have a topic called the hobby. Ooh, you have nice. to teach the basic. Just Google basic. Uh, grade 7 curriculum design on KICD website. You'll find all these things. So you can be able now to teach hockey in class. Wow. Thank you. And then uh, there are also opportunities on authorship of books. You can team up, you can team up, get a publisher, author a book on physical education, you can get the coaches of different disciplines. Yeah. Then you author a book. Then uh, when you author a book you get something called royalty. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. Even once you pass on your next of kin will be Especially if the government approves your book for use in school. Yes. A book goes for 700 shillings. If they take 2 million copies, you can just sit at home. Yes. There's an area you can think of. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for that. The rest? <laughs> so one of the responses that we gave when, they, uh, when the coaches asked if we can do this every year, uh, we informed them that we don't have the capacity. And they said, well, you can let other people help you run, but what people are for, what, what maybe did not come out clearly was the reason this was successful is because we set a certain standard. So there's a certain standard that Tunza sets for everything that we do. And we try to reach that, especially in hockey, we try to reach that FIH standard. And not everyone can give you that. So we are a really little bit holding back on to involving every Tom, Dick and Harry into the things we are doing, but it is something we'll think about. If we can train more people to do this, yeah, that's fine. No, no problem setting up, you know, twice a year, three times a year. Yay! Yay!